since I'm back again, um, I forgot the most important thing that I want to talk about. And um, that's that your baby's stomach, when it's born, is the size of a hazelnut. In the first month, it's about the size of a walnut. So, um, you know, one of the common mistakes that women make is that they feel that they have made is that they begin supplementing in the beginning, either in the hospital or at a beginning doctor's office visit because the doctor's concerned about the baby um, losing or gaining weight appropriately. So what I encourage you to do is research, you know, how much weight you think your baby should should weigh. 100% um, exclusively breastfed babies lose on average 10 to 12% of their body weight, um, even more if you've had IV fluids. Um, in the birthing process. So um, I encourage you to check how much your baby weighs before and after a nursing session so you know exactly how many ounces they're getting. I encourage you to keep track of their diapers so that you know if they are having wet diapers as the doctors say that, he, that they should be, then they're likely getting what they need from your breast. Um, if their skin isn't loose, if they're not lethargic, um, there's really nothing to be concerned about and just feel confident in the fact that you don't need processed foods in a certain measurement to tell you that your baby is getting the nutrition that it needs. Focus on the fact that it's only a hazelnut sized stomach. There's not much that your body needs to fill in order to help your baby grow. And, um, okay. And now the rest of the video. Pumping tips. I pumped for all three of my kids for one year. Wes was a little bit shorter, but all three of the kids, um, I successfully pumped enough milk for them to never need formula. I did that by um, taking pieces of clothing in of the baby and smelling them. I did it by looking at pictures of the baby constantly while I was nursing. I did it by distracting myself while I was nursing, reading a magazine, calling my friends, surfing the internet, answering Twitter, whatever it took, um, just to kind of not stare at the pump and wait for the drops to drip. That's not going to help you. That's going to stress you out. Um, the other thing is that I always waited for another letdown. So I never timed it. I never um, stuck to the exact same time every day. I mean, my schedule doesn't really allow for that, but... Um, I would plan two or three nursing, two or three pumping sessions, and when I would pump, um, I would make sure that I got more than one letdown. Um, when your baby nurses for 10 to 20 minutes at a time, it's because they nurse, they get everything that they need from what's called a letdown, a big rush of milk, and then they wait for another one. Some women have milk that comes slowly in between letdowns, but all women have letdowns. So when you're pumping, you'll be able to visually see yourself have letdowns wait for the second. Um, I even got a third. Not everyone gets a third, but just play with it, um, you know, at home for an hour and see what happens and try to find the rhythm of your body and then, you know, try to follow that when you're pumping and not necessarily a rigid schedule because your baby doesn't nurse on a rigid schedule and it'll help trick your body if you kind of stay liberal. Um, how much milk should be baby be drinking while you're gone? There's a like a chart on kellymom.com, but I want to emphasize that um, it's not the overall volume of milk that you should be concerned about, it's the portions of milk. So um, when my babies were less than six months old, they drank two ounce bottles. That sounds small, but that's what they needed. Um, they, after that, just needed to, to suckle or comfort nurse. They didn't need more fluids, um, maybe three ounces, don't do four, five, six ounces in your less than six month old baby's bottle because the daycare provider, the the person responsible for your baby isn't going to stop baby at two and a half ounces and say, oh, let's save that last half ounce. Mommy really needs you to save that. Um, they're going to just put it on the counter and throw it down the, the sink, which would make you cry if you knew it. Or um, they're just going to let the baby drink it and the baby doesn't necessarily need that extra fat and calories, which... Uh, I'm not going to say that babies don't need fat and calories. They do. But um, babies know when to cut themselves off. The problem is if it's a bottle and not a breast, then they can't slow the milk down the same way they can with their nursing. When they're nursing, there's a different kind of suckle that they have in order to prevent the milk from keep coming. And um, they're not able to do that if they have a bottle. A, a flow is a flow. So um, make small bottles and and help your provider feed your baby less so that you don't have to worry about making as much rather than worrying about overall ounces worry about portion size and for me that that really helped uh, was a game changer so 
Um, if you find that after all that uh, pumping tips and shortening the lessening the amount of milk in bottles the thing to do to get your milk up is to um, eat more sleep more and relax more so um, there are some tricks but really focus on those skin to skin relax spend time with your baby as much as you can um, take naps when your baby's napping if that's not working there are some tricks of the trade. There's a raspberry red leaf tea that you can um, drink three to four cups a day. There's mother's milk tea, which you can drink three to four cups a day. And um, there's lactation cookies um, that have ingredients that help increase um, milk supply. I've included that recipe here on this post. And I've also listed some other foods that are helpful that you can try to increase in your diet, as well as some foods that you should try to avoid. Some herbs might be in your food and you don't even realize it, but that might be kind of um, curbing your milk supply. So try to avoid those foods that are posted on this um, blog post. Additionally, um, I was asked how to manage being a mom that nurses at home, but away from the day. So um, for me, I'm away from the home every day. That doesn't mean that Wesley's still not nursing. Wesley. Um, nurses when I get up in the morning when he gets up in the morning he nurses when I get home from work and he nurses before I go to bed when he was a little bit younger he might have had one or two more nursings um, but that's our rhythm for the most part for all the boys when I've been um, on a working day on an at-home day they usually get one or two more nursings during the middle of the day just because I'm there and they ask for it um, my my baby sign milk or they'll climb up in my lap and, lap and say nur, nur, um, or try to pull down my shirt as perverted as they are. So um, if your baby is giving you cues to nurse, nurse. Don't worry about the fact that, you know, you weaned pumping during the day and um, you're afraid you won't have milk. Your, your body will have milk to give to the baby all the time. Whether it's enough to satiate the baby's appetite is another question, but um, I recommend that you pump until a year and then after that it's not really a big deal if it's satiating the appetite because they'll have plenty of solids and um, other fluids in their bellies. Okay, here's a common question. Help, my milk is stinky. Um, I'm assuming that this question comes for the most part from women who are thawing their milk from the freezer. If your milk is stinky before, um, before you put it in the freezer, or if it's just been sitting in the fridge, that probably means it's soured. And just like cow's milk, you can smell and taste soured milk, and it's gonna it's gonna make you want to spit it out, and it's gonna be gross. Um, what you're probably experiencing is a lipase breakdown. Um, it it's caused by um, the freezing process. In some women. Um, particular protein gets broken down and causes the milk to taste and smell a little bit soapy. There's nothing wrong with your milk. It's not gone bad. If the baby will take it, then great, good for you. If your baby won't take your milk and you're experiencing this issue, um, you can boil your milk before you freeze it and that will prevent this breakdown. Um, the problem with that is that, you know, it doesn't happen 100% of the time and, you know, you're killing some good bacteria if you have to boil your milk. So, um, if you're experiencing this, try to just cycle it out. You know, fresh breast milk in the refrigerator will last seven to ten days. So, just try to keep keep that going. Maybe you know have a backup supply of boiled frozen milk in the freezer, but try to operate off of fresh so that you don't get that lipase breakdown. Um, okay, so Ak, my baby had a bottle in the hospital and now he won't latch. Um, Unfortunately, this, this I cannot answer in the minutes that I have, but I would recommend that you seek the help of a um, local La Leche League um, group, that you s talk to a lactation consultant, and that you work with nipple shields to try to make that work. Nipple shields, um, they, they kind of get a bad rap, but they really help a lot of moms. So if your baby had a bottle and isn't latching on your breast, you can turn your breast into a bottle by using a nipple shield. There's a lot of information on the internet, and um, I recommend you look into that. Okay, so if your baby that is breastfeeding is not taking a bottle, um, that's another issue, and that can be just as problematic. Um, there are now a lot of really good bottles that that look and feel like breasts, obviously try those. Um, 
but the the preventative key to this is to give your baby a bottle its first bottle between four to six weeks and then one every few days thereafter um, the your baby's most adaptable to learning how to change latch at that point much longer than that and they might not want to take a bottle much shorter than that they might not want to take a breast so ideally you know make a note to yourself four to six weeks give baby first breast milk express breast milk bottle and then um, let daddy keep doing that every couple of days or whomever it is in your life do not stay in the room try to leave the house actually um, don't let baby be confused about why am I getting this thing when mommy's in the room I went to the grocery store two miles away so that Matt had a problem he could call me but um, I never gave the babies bottles. I didn't like to be in the room or the house when they were being given bottles. If I'm there, they're nursing. If I'm not, they're getting a bottle. That, it's just that easy for me. Okay. Um, toxins in breast milk while losing weight. I actually posed this question on the Balanced Bites podcast. Hopefully you can get a um, full-blown scientific uh, response to this, and I'll share that if I hear it. But essentially my answer is this. Come on seriously. Um, biology helps women lose weight after they give birth, period. I find it really hard to believe that um, the nature of losing weight after you have a baby is going to put um, toxic materials into your baby. Um, I do think that there is toxins stored up in your fat and that if you're losing fat, you're probably getting rid of those store those toxins. Um, I also think that if those toxins are in your fat and in your liver and you're eating them, uh, you know, by not eating a clean diet that you're also giving your baby that stuff by giving it your regular breast milk. So I don't think you're any better or worse off in terms of toxic in the breast milk. I think it's also important to consider that breast milk is made by your body in milk ducts, fresh and new every feed. So it's not like, you know, fat stores that have been there forever and that have this buildup that are then, you know, coming out. Breast milk is, is separated from where your fat is stored. It's in milk ducts then it's coming out it's, it's its own thing so um yeah i'm not a scientist but i'm not gonna let losing weight um i'm not going to let toxins prevent me from losing weight okay the weaning process so starting solids is part of the weaning process that's baby led weaning um when your baby's ready for solids he or she will be able to sit up on their own they will have full head control they will have a pincer grasp of some sort they'll be able to grab and put food from in front of them into their mouth and they will be having at least one or two teeth um, there's no month okay Finn uh, was five months because he was ready and screaming for food and he had all of those things because he walked at six months um, Cole didn't get food until he was eight months even at that he wasn't really ready we only gave him bananas and avocados until he was nine months then he basically just started eating from our table inside of two weeks. Wes was just about the six month mark. So each boy was a little bit different. I looked for those cues. I waited for them to tell me they were ready and then we started solids. I started slowly and I started on some basic foods that you can read about in other posts on my blog, but um, make sure that you're you're letting your baby tell you when they're ready to to start the weaning process. And that includes, you know, when your baby's entirely done weaning. Um, some babies can be, you know, weaned um, themselves at 14 months. They're really independent. They want to go, go, go. I know with Finn, when we weaned at 17 months, he was done. He was, he didn't want anything to do with, with being tied down to mom. Um, Cole wasn't quite ready when my milk dried up uh, when I got pregnant, and he was nearly two. So, you know, it's just follow your gut, follow your instincts. You know, obviously breast milk is best. The longer you can do it, the better, but um, do what you can. That's everybody's questions and answers. I hope that's conclusive enough and long enough for you. Um, best of luck.